Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. When 39 students were abducted from the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Kaduna State, their parents prayed they would be released soon. They knew about, of course, the kidnappings in Kagara and Jangebe and how the captives were released. But it's been two weeks and the prayers of these parents are now turned into desperation. They have come together to ask the Kaduna State Government to negotiate with the kidnappers. One of the parents, uh, Friday Sani, is joining us this morning from Kaduna. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. We know it's a trying time for you. Welcome to the breakfast. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your line. Okay. Uh, let's get you in to share what has been happening in the last two weeks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, how the news broke to you that your, your children were taken. But what have the last two weeks been like? Have there been any conversations from the government? Have you heard any word from, you know, the kidnappers or anything? Yeah, actually, actually it, uh, it, it is a very serious and traumatic uh, experience with all of us, the parents of the adopted children. In fact, um, as to whether we have any com uh, communication from the government as to whether they are uh, they are working on their release. In fact, it's a it's a situation that we don't know. We don't know. We as parents, we are kept at the dark. We have done everything to engage government to know what they are actually doing, but all the information we get from the government is sketchy. It never shows any seriousness that the government is doing anything for the, the release of our children. So that is the problem we have for now. We have tried to engage the management of the college several times and it look as if all the stories remain the same. So we are bothered. Okay. Um Mr. Sani, there was a video that, you know, was released. We saw the terrorists, you know, demand ransom. Did you identify your child in that video? Uh, pardon? Can you hear me, Mr. Sani? Yes, I can hear you. I said there was a video that was released. We're showing it right now on the screen. You know, students of the school begging to be freed. Did you identify your child in that video? Yes, actually, I identify one of them. My two children are there. Wow. Uh, I, I identify one there. Uh, and it, you know, it's not easy for uh, the person that shot that video to maybe cover all of them at the time, maybe just a part of it. So I still believe that both of them are there. OK. W would that be a, a daughter or a son? Huh? The one you identified, is would that be your daughter or your son? Yes, it's my daughter. Wow. How old it's is she? Is, that one is 18 years, while the second one is 20 years. Wow. Okay, so um, one of the things that we shared earlier was, of course, when the Jangebe and uh, Kankara you know, uh, students were released, I'm sure that gave you some level of hope that you know, soon enough your daughter and, uh, or your, your, your kids, and of course the kids of the others, will be released also. Um, how heartbreaking is it for you currently, seeing that there's nothing you know, that has been done? And what are your biggest fears in a situation like this? OK, actually, well, we kept believing that uh, if other children who were adopted in states like Niger, uh, Zamfara, Kastina were released, we had the hope that our will also be released. But the challenge we have is how soon? Because those ones never take a week before they are released. But to us as parents, the fear we have is it's like we are being abandoned to our faith. And one of the challenges we also have is that we have tried to let government know, going by the statement of the state governor, that he's not ready to negotiate. We know that they have, they have uh, had a link with the bandits. If we as parents can have a link with the bandits, I think we can look for a way of negotiating for the release of our children. But then we are still appealing to the government to engage these people 
in, in negotiation so that our children can be released. That is what we, we have been on doing because any other form of uh, a major to release these children may be disastrous. That is what I kept telling the government. What is the, is, is there any word on ground in Kaduna State? Is there, you know, people that you have spoken to that have an idea where these kids might be? Uh, because I'm sure that you've been in that environment long enough. You know, there's, you know, there must be whispers here and there to suggest, yeah. you know, who these kidnappers are, uh, where they came from, or, or anything like that. Is there any clues whatsoever that you might want to share with the government, you know, to try out with rescuing your kids? Actually, I cannot tell where the bandits came from. The only thing we know is that they broke through the fence through the, from the back of the college and enter into the college and adopt our people. But if you listen to TVC yesterday, uh, a clergy, that is Sheikh Ahmad Gumi, was saying that these people have been identified and they intend to go for the negotiation of these children. But the problem is that government has blocked all form of negotiation by way of telling the ministry, military to shoot Assad if they discover anybody in the bush with rifle. And that has made it difficult for them to reach to the bandits and negotiate the release of our children. So we are pleading with government to look at what they're supposed to do so that these people can help us in making contact, necessary contact that we, that we enhance the release of our children. Right. Mr. Sani, remember that, you know, the Kaduna state government had earlier said that he would do anything possible to make sure that the students are released, even if it's pay, paying ransom. But they backtracked and said that wasn't going to happen. How did that make you feel? In fact, the story are so many sides. The first story was that government said he can do anything, even if it takes going to pay the bandit to stop killing. Then, on the other hand, he said it is wrong to negotiate with bandits. And that statement precedes the adoption of the children, of our children particularly. And now it's like the government is standing by the second statement that says he cannot negotiate. I know it will not cost government anything to bring out these children. I know what the governor is up to. But the delay is the problem we are having. So I, we, we, we wonder, we, don't, we are confused on what major government we want to put in place apart from negotiation to release these children. If it, is, if it has to do with the security, the security have been around on the trail of these people for the past two, two, two weeks, for the past two weeks now, and nothing tangible is coming out from that. And our world are in the bush suffering. They are suffering, most of them are unclaimed. And that is why we are saying that if the option of using force will not work, which we, we, we as parents, we don't encourage because of the life of our children. By means of trying to hit the bandit, they may fall back on our children and eliminate them. So that is why we are saying that government should follow them with care, okay. negotiate with them, and bring them back to us alive. F Friday, Their lives are precious to us. Friday, Sunny, we, we sympathize yes. with you and, you know, the other families and parents that are going through this, you know, worry as to where their kids might be and how soon they might return home. Our prayers are with you and we hope that the government, you know, swiftly acts on this to get your children back home and back to safety. Thanks Amen. again for coming uh, on The Breakfast this morning. We hope to have you again soon, hopefully to celebrate the release of your daughters. Thank you very much. I will wish that you will join us in the celebration after we have eventually won the battle. Amen. Oh, we definitely Thanks. will. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Good Have morning to you. Day. All right. Um,
can't imagine what you know goes through a parent's mind knowing that their kid has been you know in, in captivity in some forest someplace uh, for two weeks um, and of course the questions of whether they will come back or not you know I, I, I really have no you know um, of course, we wish him the best. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're talking uh, illicit financial flows now. It says that Nigeria is as much as $5 billion is frozen um, outside Nigeria. And uh, uh, CISLAC and uh, Transparency International put out that information. Uh, we're going to be speaking about that um, after this short break. Good morning.